So, you belong to a small group? Why, yes. Yes, I do. So, why do you belong to a small group? Well, how much time do I have to tell you? About three minutes. <laughs> well, alrighty then. I'll give you three reasons why I belong to a small group. Reason number one. Obedience. Obedience? Yes. The Bible says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. But I go to church on Sundays and Wednesday night. Solomon said, I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. In a small group, we become true friends and we take the time to talk. And number two is? Friendship. A friend loves at all times. If you were on the verge of total ruin and you belonged to a small group, you would be loved by your friends. And we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus, correct? Correct. For if two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them, Jesus said. Wow, I never thought about that as a small group. You ready for number three? Absolutely. Number three, spiritual growth. Are you able to describe spiritual growth in the minute you have left? The Apostle Paul wrote, we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, as is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you abounds toward each other. Okay, I see. I would be obedient, make true friends, grow in the spirit, by belonging to a small group, yes? <laughs> yes. Oh, and much, much more. But, alas, we're out of time. So, sign up at the small group fair today out in the lobby. Thanks for sharing. Well, thank you for asking about small groups. You're welcome. All right, that's a wrap. There's a widespread and growing feeling that our nation's gotten terribly off course. There's concern about the ever-increasing, daunting power of the federal government over every aspect of our lives. There's a palpable fear that our nation may stumble and that we may never recover. I think it is an imperfect document that reflects some deep flaws in colonial culture nascent at that time. The Constitution's goal was to limit the power of government. Today, the government has abandoned that whole crazy idea and kept the power for itself and keeps gathering more. The Constitution was not written in the name of the leaders, but it was formed by the authority of we the people. Liberty is violated when Congress becomes unconcerned about needing to stay within its authorized scope of power. And it was expected from the very beginning of the nation that there would be people that would effectively enforce the sworn duty of every leader to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Wednesday, October 3rd, 
we're going to be starting a free class on constitutional literacy. This 10-part class is going to run 6 to 8 p.m. Monday evenings, right here at Candlelight. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Candlelight. I'm James Barbieri, and I've got your upcoming events. For further details on any of the events I'm about to mention, please check inside your bulletin on that upcoming events flyer. It's time for a blood drive once again. Signups for this blood drive are going to open up next Sunday, October 2nd. This Friday, September 30th, Candlelight's Women's Ministry is going to be heading out to Green Bluff for a pumpkin patch tour. Ladies, if you're interested in going, please make sure you sign up today out in the lobby. Wednesday, October 5th, Candlelight is going to start hosting a free class on basic computer skills. This class is going to run from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Wednesday afternoons from October 5th through November 2nd. If you're interested in attending, you can sign up out in the lobby. And that's everything I got for you today, Candlelight. For further details on any of that, or for any of the other things that we've got going on here at Candlelight, just check inside your bulletin on that upcoming events flyer or online at candlelight.org. Have a great morning.